The last time Brenda Lynn saw her father, she didn't hug him or speak to him. It was 2009 and the high school student was preparing to fly to New Caledonia on an all-girls trip with her classmates. The 15-year-old looked around to see classmates kissing their parents goodbye, but the prideful teenager didn't say anything to her father and thought to herself, it's only going to be a week. She had no idea that while she was gone, her entire family, including both parents, two younger brothers, and auntie, would be murdered. Thank you for dropping by Ghostly Crimes. And if you're new here, welcome. As you can tell by the name, I'm a crime channel and sometimes I tell spooky stories as well. If that interests you, then hit the subscribe button. Today's case is about the Lin family murders. One of the most notorious cases in Australia. Min Lin and Yun Lin, who also went by Lily, migrated from China to Australia, where they met and fell in love. They worked tirelessly in hopes of providing a better future for their children. The Lins were well respected and loved by their community. They grew a newspaper business in North Epping, with an estimate revenue of one million per year. In their big two-story home lived Min Lin, Lily, Lily's sister Irene, 15-year-old Brenda, followed by 12-year-old Henry and 9-year-old Terry. Min Lin's sister Kathy and her husband, Robert Zay, lived within walking distance of Min Lin's house. Kathy and Robert moved to Australia in 2002. Robert was an ear and nose and throat specialist back in China, but decided on a whole new career in Australia. Unfortunately for Robert, his attempt at a restaurant business in Melbourne failed, so Kathy and Robert decided three years later to move to Sydney to be closer to their family, Min Lin and Lily. Kathy worked part-time in Min Lin's news agency business. On July 17, 2009, members of the extended Lin family got together for their regular Friday night dinner at the home of grandparents Yang Fi Lin and Feng Shen Chu. Henry complained of having broken shoes, so his grandmother gave him $50 for winning a badminton competition. She even tried to get Henry to stay the night, but the 12-year-old said he needed to play the sport first thing in the morning. Mr. Lin said, All in all, it was a harmonious, quiet, normal night. Little did they know that something awful was about to unfold, and their lives would forever be changed. On July 18, Kathy went over to visit her brother Min Lin and his wife Lily. She was surprised to find the family-operated newspaper agency closed. Concerned, she grabbed her husband Robert and the two of them walked over to the Lin home, which was only a couple of blocks away from their home. When the couple arrived, they found the front door unlocked and the walls covered in blood splatter. Robert told a terrified and frantic Kathy to call the police. He left Kathy at the scene and went over to the in-laws to let them know what they had just discovered. Kathy called the police and screamed, I think someone murdered my brother's family. Now I'm going to play the 911 call, but I must warn you that this may be disturbing to some. What's wrong? I need someone to come quick. We are coming. You need to stop screaming and tell me what the problem is. Yeah, I think so. I think my brother's family. Someone killed my brother's family. Why do you think that? Yeah, because I went to his, his house and uh, I knocked the door and the door is um, difficult and I opened it. And then up the stairs, I found my brother. I couldn't find it. I'm not sure. Where's your brother? Someone. I could. I can find him. My brother's sister in law. I think someone is fine. Are they on and the I ground? When police arrived, they saw there was blood everywhere. The blood was splattered on the victims, floors, and the harsh red color contrasted strongly with the white walls. Their death was quick and came without warning. The first to die was Min and Lily in their beds. Initially, they thought Min committed the murder as they couldn't find him. The injuries to the victims' faces were so severe that the first responding officers wondered if a shotgun had been used. There was evidence to suggest the two boys woke up and tried to escape. The proof was in the deep wounds received and horrifyingly from the way the blood splattered across the white walls. This indicated that the victims were moving as the deadly blows from the weapon used rained down on them. Irene, Lily's sister, was slumped against a wall. While Brenda was still overseas, she received an article from a friend of her family's murder. At first, she didn't believe it. Brenda arrived home in shock to find out her whole family was murdered. At the airport, when she saw her aunt's grief-stricken face, she knew the unimaginable had happened. I can't even imagine receiving tragic news from an article while overseas. On July 29, Kathy and her husband Robert made an emotional plea for public help in solving the crimes. Is there any appeal you can say now? Asking for anybody who can help. Yeah, I'd like to just say that they need more information, uh, even very, very small crew, 
to help them to solve the case. If anyone can help, um, please contact the police. I want to say if anybody know, um, know any, any information, um, just uh, um, call police and yeah, that's it. Burglary was soon ruled out as there were no signs of forced entry, no broken doors, windows, or locks, and nothing was missing. Even though it was not recovered at the scene, the investigators believe the murder weapon was some kind of hammer, and they believe some victims may have been smothered before being battered. Disturbingly, Brenda's room was untouched, almost as though the killer knew she wasn't home. Twenty-four bloody footprints were found throughout the home, all of which were the same size leading investigators to believe the killer acted alone. The shoe size were nine and a half. Shockingly, they believed the shoe prints to belong to Robert, as he had the same Asics six nine and a half shoes. Robert was now the prime suspect. Now that he knew he was the prime suspect, he was going to conceal all evidence. A hidden camera video installed by investigators shows Robert collecting his shoe box, cutting them up, soaking them in a bucket, and then flushing them. Just after 9 a.m. on May 5, 2011, Robert Shee was charged with the murders. Police were sure they had their person after two years of investigating. As you can imagine, this left Kathy and family members stunned. It was a single blood stain labeled Stain 91 that became an integral part of the Crown's case. It contained four of the five victims' DNA. Three police forensic biologists had found the stain while searching the floor on their hands and knees on May 13, 2010, 10 months after the murders. Investigators believe Robert drugged his wife, Kathy, before going over to her brother's home. Once there, he cut the electricity and snuck inside, where he used a hammer-like object to bludgeon his brother-in-law, Min Lin, Min Lin's wife, Lily, Lily's sister, Irene, and his two nephews, Henry and Terry. So what was the motive? The court heard that Robert had touched Brenda inappropriately, even before the murders, but the assault escalated when she moved in with Robert and Kathy. It was believed this is the reason for the murders, as he had complete access to Brenda, with his in-laws dead. Crown Prosecutor Tanya Smith said, Robert felt anger and resentment about his brother-in-law being held in such regard, when in his mind he was so undeserving. Robert was sentenced to five life sentences on February 13, 2017, all to be run consecutively. Minlin's parents wept in relief following the verdicts. On the other side of the court, not far from where her husband sat, Kathy also wept, declaring he's innocent as the jury left the courtroom. But her parents strongly believed their daughter's husband was the killer. Brenda says she was disappointed by her Aunt Kathy Lynn's behavior during Robert's trial and conviction and her insisting he was innocent. She said, I was very disappointed by that because when I, when I gave evidence, I didn't, I told the truth. And she used to send me messages saying that he was innocent. He was being framed by the police. I hope one day she can realize that all I did was tell the truth. She's better off not with him. Brenda says she regrets not hugging her father and saying thank you for being an amazing, loving, and caring parent. She said the pain of losing loved ones that never goes away and does not get any easier with time. As time goes on, others may forget, but I will have to live with the aftermath of the crime for the rest of my life. They had been murdered by someone so close to them, a family member who they should have trusted. But unfortunately, evil lived inside of him. Robert was a selfish man. He was greedy and jealous but he was also a predator who murdered a family to gain access to their daughter. I hope Brenda can heal 
from the trauma she went through at the hands of someone who was supposed to protect her. Thank you for dropping by my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so. Until next time, take care and stay safe.